We're going to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 8. I hope I'm being loud enough. I'm not sure how loud I am. I'm too congested to tell. <laughs> but verse number 8 of Romans 1, Paul is officially begins his epistle here after his greeting. And he says, First, I thank my God for Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. I want us to first notice here that he he goes to God through Christ. My God through Jesus Christ. He says that the only way to God the Father is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have it. We have great access to the Father, but we can't bypass Christ. Mm -hmm. like John 14, 6, Christ himself said, No man can come to the Father except by me. That's right. Then the word in Ephesians 2.18, Paul reaffirms this and says that it's through him that we have access to the Father. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Muslims, they, they try to say that they have access directly to God and that mm -hmm. you know, Jesus was just a, a, a prophet. Well, they, I was reading some about them last night to familiarize myself with them, but they, you know, they think that Moses was a prophet, David was a prophet, and Christ was a prophet, but mm. that their writings and teachings have been corrupted through other men. No, we only have access to God through Christ. Amen. Many people today want to circumvent that and or make up their own God that they have control and access to, but the God of the Bible, he is only to be accessed through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not him that. Well, it is a great privilege we have to have that access, but we must realize Without Christ, we wouldn't have such privileges. If you recall, in the Old Testament, they usually had to go through the priest and make their sacrifices, and you would then to make only then could they make their petitions known before God. Mm -hmm. But we have access directly through Christ, who is our High Priest, or Hebrews. Amen. And then he also wants to notice that he called him my God, I think. My God for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, our God, God of the Bible, Jehovah, he is a very personal God, unlike Amen. many other religions. So I use Muslims since they're the, the second largest religion in the world. They, they have Allah, which is literally translates to the God. They don't have a personal relationship with him. But they do have some right views of God. They just have the wrong God, even though they would say that we serve the same God. Mm. They do believe in a sovereign God who is who will judge all at the end of time. They do believe he is does according to his will, and then we can't stop his will, but they had no personal connection with God. They're right. subservient to him, and in a sense we are too, yet we can call him my God, we can say it. he is our God. <clears throat> See, unlike Muslims and the many other false religions of the world, they don't have that personal relationship with God. Right. But thanks, we can thank God that we do have this personal relationship with Him, that we can, sure. we can call Him our Father. Amen. That we can call Christ our brother, our friend even. Mm -hmm. That is different than all the other religions of the world. Amen. But he, 
going back to our text here, he says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. And it's noteworthy that the very first thing he does here after his greeting is he doesn't start with some impressive doctrinal point. He doesn't begin with some great rebuke or some witty remark, but he simply says, I thank God for you. Amen. Well, I thank God for you all, or I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all, he says. And he thanks God for the, the saints, the believers there in Rome. You know, I know that's something he commonly does in his letters, and we can usually just brush over it as just some courtesy or some customary thing. But there's nothing in the Word of God by accident. Amen. But we often ask people how they're doing without really caring a whole lot how they're doing. Right. Because it's our custom. I'm not to take on Adam, but I'm sure he asks people how they're doing quite often. And I'm sure he doesn't care about their <laughs> their grandmother's aunt that died last week. <laughs> I'm sure they're willing to tell him about it, though. <laughs> and yet, Paul here very sincerely says, I thank my God for you all. Amen. <coughs> he said he could have mentioned this in passing at any point, but he takes care to mention this first. And first, I thank my God for you all. Mm -hmm. Do we think enough of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to thank God for them? Or much less to put such importance on it as Paul does here. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I know we're a small group here, so maybe we don't... I don't know if you're thankful for other members or not. Or since most of us are most of are related anyway, you might not be. <laughs> but yet, we ought to be thankful to the, to God for the, our fellow believers in Christ. Amen. Including ones in other assemblies. Mm -hmm. Paul was not a member of the church at Rome. He was not their pastor or he was not a missionary to them necessarily. Right. But he would go to them eventually. And here he's writing to them. And he thanks God for them. We ought to be just as caring about the people of God that we would thank God for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. So we here in this area have a lot of churches we can fellowship with, but I'm sure Brother Larry can tell you it's not the same in every place. All right. Amen. When I went to the church over there in North Carolina, I think the nearest church of Light Faith in order was four or five hours away. Yep. We should be thankful, though. We have brothers and sisters to fellowship with, even if it is just our own assembly. Amen. But oftentimes I think we get like a Elijah. They say, I'm left here alone, and they seek my life too. Mm -hmm. Paraphrasing. What but God tell them though? I reserved was it seven thousand men to have it. out the need of Baal. Yeah. <clears throat> even A.W. Pink, who I like to read after he as he got to the end of his life, he often thought he was alone and that no one else was truly seeking to serve God. Mm. So while we ought to <laughs> seek the fellowship of the saints and thank God that we have such opportunities, <laughs> otherwise we will end up like that, very alone and as if no one else is trying to serve God. Here, Paul, he gives us special thanks for the, for the church here at Rome, for the believers here. And notice he doesn't say just his favorite people in there either, does he? He says, I thank God for you all. You know, all the saints there, all the believers there, the whole of the church. We're not careful. We'll thank God for people we like, but not the ones we don't like as much. 
Christ himself. I'm going out on limb here a little bit and paraphrasing, but Christ himself said, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Right. So then he, after he says, I thank God for you all, and he gives a reason why he's thanking God for them, and he says that, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Amen. How great is our faith? He said that it's spoken of throughout the whole world. You notice here, it wasn't just one individual in the church either. You can say, I think God for Jesus Christ, or I thank my God for Jesus Christ for you all that the pastor so and so has a great faith. Mm -hmm. He says that your faith of the entirety of the church here had such a faith that it was spoken of throughout the whole world. Does anyone speak of our faith? Both individually and as a congregation? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Would the town of Dover know of our faith? Would America know of our faith? Would right. Christ, the whole world know of our faith? I'd say we we fail in comparison to the Romans in this matter. Right. Well, Paul commends others for the, their faith as well. The Ephesians, in Ephesians 1.15, he said he had heard of their faith as well as the Colossians and Colossians 1 4. But he didn't say to them that their faith had been known throughout the whole world. But to the Romans here, he specifically says their faith had been spoken of throughout the whole world. Right. I don't think Paul necessarily meant the Native Americans over here at that time were talking about the Romans, but all of the known world at that time, as it's right. called, they knew of the faith of the Romans. Would it be said the same of us that, some, that people know of our faith? Well, does our, do our neighbors, do our family even know of our faith? It's a sad testimony if they do not. Right. Others who faith is mentioned is Eunice and Lois, the mother and grandmother of Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 5. Paul said that he knew of their faith. You know, those in Hebrews chapter 11, their faith is recorded for us thousands of years later. Right. Others like Daniel and the three Hebrews, their faith is recorded for us. But if, if our faith was written down, would it even be something that people would remember mm. years from now? Mm. <coughs> I have to say that the average American Christian, there, there's nothing remarkable about our faith. You're right. In other parts of the world, there's Christians that are dying for, for not denying the name of Christ. There's those that are persecuted for just assembling together to worship God. Yeah, here in America, I'd say our, by and large, our faith is unremarkable. It's very insignificant. Now, there's people that are faithful to the service of God, I would say that. But what do we actually do in faith is very little. Mm -hmm. So how do we and how do we show our faith? There's a few ways, certainly more ways than I could probably can cover, but when we did not deny him, when we face hardship or even death, that is one of the great ways we show our faith in him. Amen. Think of men like Stephen. Even when the rocks were flying, he was still preaching the truth. Amen. Those men later on, such as Polycarp, who would not deny him so they were going to put him on a stake and burn him alive. Faced with such a death, I'd say the average Christian today would recant their faith. Right. But it takes great faith to trust him that no matter what makes him <coughs> away, we will just stay faithful to him. <coughs> or 
another way we, we can display our faith is when we trust God in His ways in spite of opposition, in spite of man's logic, sometimes even in the face of these things. Amen. Think of Daniel and Hanai, Azariah, and Mishael when they were, even before the fiery furnace, they were given the option to eat the king's meat and the unclean things and drink king's wine. But yet, what did Daniel say? Just give us pulse and water. Just beans and lentils and some water. Well, they stayed faithful to the ways of God even though it would have been perfectly acceptable in their society to, to eat the king's meat, to defile themselves. Mm -hmm. And yet they stayed faithful and God blessed in that, that they fared more sumptuously than king's men. Amen. And yet, <clears throat> we oftentimes so you may say we, I mean us as American Christians, we are very prone to say, well, society doesn't see anything wrong with that. Or, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Or God doesn't care about that. Mm -hmm. Many times we need to just trust God when He has said in His Word, and not try to modernize it or rationalize it. Or even a step farther when the, the three were before the fiery furnace, man's logic would say, well, you should save yourself and then you can go back serving God. Mm. They said, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter, O King. He might. But our God, he is able to deliver us. Well, we have his faith in God, he will and either which way, whether they perished or whether they lived, they would be delivered. Amen. And certainly God did deliver them in a great way. When I mentioned those in <clears throat> Hebrews 11, we have such as Noah, who just trusted God and what God told him to do. We have those such as Abel, who just did things God's way. Amen. Just by faith, he says he offered a more excellent sacrifice, that he offered that which was according to the law of God. We had those, you know, we go on to Abraham, who God told him to just go into a country where I will tell you. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but brother, the Lord told you just get up from Bumpus Mills and go somewhere, and when you get there, I'll tell you you're there. Mm. It'll probably take a considerable amount of faith. Right. But we like to have everything planned out, make sure we, quote, know God's will. We should know His will, but sometimes He doesn't always tell us all the details. Amen. And then He offered up Isaac, His only begotten son. Trusting that God could raise him again from the dead. Mm -hmm. It goes on to speak of the faith of Isaac and Jacob, and as well as Joseph and Moses. And he's, the writer there says the time of failed to speak of the others, such as David, Gideon, Samson, Samuel, the prophets. There's also the faith of Joshua and Caleb and Rahab the harlots. Mm -hmm. The Israelites as a whole nation when they crossed over the Red Sea when they marched around Jericho until the walls fell down. And we have all these great examples of faith recorded in the scriptures. And yet what is our faith? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Many of those things said went against man's reasoning, went against man's opinions and ideas. Another way we can display our faith, which is probably one way that we can easily do it in our society, and we rely on His sufficiency and everything. Amen. 
even when there seems to be no hope, such as the woman with the issue of blood. If you remember, she had this issue of blood for 12 years, I believe it was, and spent all her money on physicians. And one of the gospel says she had gotten no better, but even worse. Mm -hmm. But then she just said, I just need to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. What did Christ say? Thy faith hath made me whole. Well, there's many other examples. That's just one of the clearest ones. Just about all the miracles and the Christ ministry involved faith. When the man that was lame, they lowered him down through the roof. Amen. And that took a great act of faith. There's even a, a song about it that it's just a, supposed to be an illustration, as the song says, but it's, some people probably doubted that Christ could heal that man. Right. Yeah, we see even further in that, he healed the sick, he cast out the demons, and he raised up the dead, even Lazarus, who had been dead for four days. Amen. Even though we have all these great examples of the power of our God and the faith of God's people, would it be said of, of us that we have this great faith like the Romans did? Mm. So the last way which we can display our faith in this society and this world today is when we publicly declare Christ as Savior. Amen. Is there, is there anything better that shows our faith in Him as Savior than when we tell others about Him. The early church was known for that. Paul himself was known for that. They just preached Christ and Him crucified. They didn't need entertainments and you know, fancy things that attract people, but really the best way to further the gospel is not by any of these means, but simply by preaching Christ and Him crucified. Amen. That we, if we truly believe that He is the Savior, that the only cure, if you will, for sin, is so there any better testimony than to simply tell others about Him? If we truly believe all of us that aren't saved are on their way to hell and separate apart from Him, is there any better test of faith than to tell others about the one who can save them. You know, the, I don't know what all the Romans that did here, there's not a, a whole lot recorded about their actions in the scriptures. But we know enough about them that they had a great faith. Amen with the God that would be said the same of us, that we have this great faith. But the world around us would know without doubt that we are the servants of God. Amen. I don't think there was any doubt when the Roman church met that they're, what they were doing. Well, no doubt when people saw them, there was, I wonder if he's a Christian or not. I don't think it was said that about them. Right. But their faith was spoken of throughout the whole world. You know, I'm also reminded of who it was that was with Paul and said they turned the whole world upside down. Mm -hmm. you know, we had such an impact upon the world around us that it could be said of any such thing like that of us. Mm -hmm. No, I'm afraid if we're not if we're not doing much for God, they'll probably say, well, I wonder if them folks are still meeting over there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we ought to be of such great faith that we others can see Christ in and through us. Mm -hmm. So busy about the work that he's called us to do that there will be no doubt that we are doing the work of God. 
I'm not talking about handing out food and stuff like some churches do. Nothing wrong with that, but really telling others about the one that can save them. That is the first and most primary way in which we can show others our faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> and then when called on to do rare things, that first act of faith will lead us to be able to show our faith in greater ways. Amen. So I think we fool ourselves that we think when trials and hard times come that we're gonna our faith is gonna stand strong if we can't even tell others about Christ now in the easy times. Mm -hmm. So when we are gone from this world, so when Christ doesn't come back soon, will it will be said that in the church in Dover they had great faith or or will our testimony be something more like the the Ephesians or mm -hmm. They left their first love, or, right? Or many other churches when he said, "I have somewhat against thee." Mm -hmm. It ought to be that we were faithful and full of faith. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and close with that thought. Make that.